We've seen a few weeks of MLS action so far, and we're starting to get to a point where we have somewhat of an understanding of how these teams are operating. As MLS heads into week four, I'm coming back after a nice trip from Charlotte, check out my previous video, and I'm ready to put my name on the line again as I preview and predict some of the games I'm looking forward to this weekend. As always, let me hear what you think in the comments below and let's get started. First up, I'm taking a look into two teams that are definitely working on themselves. And the first game of the weekend, FC Cincinnati versus Inter Miami. Now I understand this isn't the typical big matchup you'd expect, but with both teams being on the darker side of the Eastern Conference, this could be a moment to really show what you can do, at least against a team that kind of matches your own level. For the Cincinnati side of the game, they're coming off their first win of the season, and it was a big one at that, away from home in Orlando. That win ended a 14 game losing streak that goes all the way back to last season for Cincinnati. And maybe a surprise for supporters of their team, they actually look competitive here. Now, yes, they did concede a lot of shots on their goal, but that's where new goalkeeper signing in the offseason, Alec Khan, has stepped in. He had a rough first two games for his new club, conceding five goals in his first match, which included an own goal as well. But in this past game, he started to show what he could actually bring to the table. For Miami, they're going through some drama. With seven goals conceded in their first three games, things have started to blow up for them off the field. There's been a lot of talk about their star player, Gonzalo Higuain's body language on the field, with him showing obvious frustration at his attacking partners. But to be honest, I kind of feel for him. This season, Higuain's been moved into the number 10 position and he's been creating the chances, but to actually finish them, you need other guys supporting. Yes, Higuain could maybe do better in his own scoring ways, but he sits third in the league for key passes. So I mean, you can't put the blame all on him which is what head coach Phil Neville is doing. After subbing him out in the 63rd minute, Neville called him out in the post-game press conference to say he wished his star players would perform like other teams' his players have. It's starting to get rough in Miami's camp, and even though they're playing historically the worst team over the past three years, I'm not confident they'll be able to take Cincinnati out at home. I'm torn about what to say here, but I think Cincinnati will win this game 1-0. Next up is a team I probably wouldn't be talking about right now if they didn't pull off one of the biggest wins of the weekend. It's Real Salt Lake against Nashville. As you heard, I think RSL's insane comeback at the end of their match versus the New England Revolution was the best win of the weekend. Yes, I know that the snow and the wind had an effect in that game, but I won't let that take away from the absolute heart this Salt Lake team plays with. 2-0 down with 30 minutes to go was the situation we saw. When in the 78th minute, RSL Sergio Cardova pulled up with what could have been a consolation goal. But then, Justin Glad equalized in the 88th minute, and then five minutes later, they found a winner, turning the result on its head in a 3-2 win at Gillette Stadium. For a roster that many doubted, this RSL team has started off the season undefeated with two wins and one draw in three games. And that includes playing two of the most dangerous teams in the league with Seattle and the Revolution. This week though, it doesn't get easier having Nashville SC, one of the picks to finish high in the West, coming to Rio Tinto. For Nashville, they're coming off a loss to Dallas last week, but they didn't play as bad as that scoreline may have looked, even though they weren't able to place a shot on target. This will be Nashville's fourth away game out of their eight game stretch before their new stadium opens up. Therefore, this team is fighting for any points they can pick up, and honestly, even one point on the road could go a long way. I usually have a strong trust in Nashville's defense, but they did just have one man from Dallas cut through them like he was messy in Spain. Nashville will need Hani Mukhtar to create a bit more this time around, and Real Salt Lake will be hoping that they can carry the momentum from the final minutes against the Revolution into this game. Salt Lake is used to pulling off results at home, but I think we're going to see a draw here, and I'm going to go with the scoreline of 1-1. And for the final in-depth match I'm going to break down here, we have two of the best teams so far in the East after the first three weeks, New York Red Bulls and the Columbus Crew. I'll start this off by saying both of these teams have had somewhat of an easier schedule so far this year, but they can only play who they're scheduled against. 
So I'm still going to say that they're two of the best teams we've seen so far this season. For the Red Bulls, it seems like Garrett Struber is finally getting his Red Bull system working in the right direction. We're seeing a high energy team winning balls and instantly creating opportunities in the transition. In three games, the Red Bulls have had seven goals, which includes a 3-1 win and a 4-1 win away from home against San Jose and Toronto respectively. Last week, they fell to Minnesota, but they were thoroughly creating opportunities, recording 19 shots with eight on target. Lewis Morgan, a new addition this offseason, has fit really well into the system, which even allowed him to earn his first hat trick of his professional career a few weeks ago. For Columbus, they have a similar story to New York, netting nine goals in their first three games and ranking first in expected goals in the whole league. This is a totally different side of the crew that we didn't see really at all in 2021. Leading this charge is Lucas Zellerian, who just earned his third spot in MLS's Team of the Week for the third week in a row. With four goals and two assists this season, Zeleron has been the player that the crew need him to be to have a successful year. The question mark for Columbus arrives on their set piece defending though. They conceded two goals in the final six minutes against San Jose on a free kick and a corner. And last week, they conceded a goal early to Toronto off a recycled corner. Balls served into the box are not confidently dealt with, and that's something the Red Bulls love to do. So I'm not going to be surprised if that's how we see the Red Bulls take advantage in this game. This may be one of the tightest matchups we see this weekend, and I think the Red Bulls will win it, probably off a set piece. I'm going to go with 3-2. to two. Other games I'll have my eyes on this weekend include Charlotte FC hosting the Revolution. For one, I want to see what type of crowd Charlotte gets in their second home match, but also I want to see how long it takes them to get at least a point in one of these games. In the Revs' case, how will they bounce back from having their last game stolen from them in the course of 12 minutes? The other game I'm looking forward to this weekend is Austin FC against the Seattle Sounders. There's been a lot of talk if Austin is actually a good team or if they're just playing bad teams. I think they performed really well against Portland last week in their 1-0 loss, and this will be just another test to see if they are actually the real deal or not. And finally, we'll end this preview on me picking my guaranteed win of the weekend. My last guaranteed pick of New York over San Jose in week one came true, so now I have the pressure on me. I'm not as confident in this pick as I was in my week one pick, but I'll say for sure that LAFC will win against the Vancouver Whitecaps. It seems like Vela is back after a slight injury scare, and we're seeing LA find goals in other positions with Apoku and Tajori Shradi on the score sheet last week. So my guaranteed pick of week four is LAFC over the Vancouver Whitecaps. I hope you guys enjoyed getting back to some previews, and like I mentioned at the start, please look at my last video of my experience of Charlotte FC's inaugural home opener. I promise it's a really good one. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see ya.